going to now move on for a couple of minutes and talk about vision. This is building on the theme of GIS being a kind of next generation infrastructure. And I think, well, I'll just go through it. First off, you and I live in a world that resembles a kind of living organism. It's complex, it's interconnected, it's a kind of ecosystem. It's self-healing in many ways. After fire comes new vegetation. It's also always changing. And it's also, it's also a place where we call home. It's a place where humans are an integral part of this ecosystem. It's evolving through time. And this is contextual for virtually everything that you and I do, is transactions in this world. It's, it's an amazing world, and it's just an amazing world. At the same time, humans today, caused in part by our overpopulation and our carelessness, are creating a, a human footprint which is not really sustainable. And we see this in the news with things like climate change, natural disasters, social conflicts, loss of nature, those kinds of things that you care about and your families care about. It's, a, it's both daunting and scary. So what can we do? I suppose you've asked that question of yourself. You know, d d d don't, don't use plastics as much. Don't, uh, you know, contaminate as much. How can you personally change your lifestyle? Um, well, those are important things to do. But at the same time, you particularly in this room have a, a special, I would say, privilege to be able to do something more. Our nervous system in our bodies resembles, in a way, a concept that I like to call a, a geospatial nervous system. Our world actually needs a nervous system. So your body, when you, you know, fear something or you, you feel it, you, you think for a moment and you react. It's almost, your central nervous system is almost spontaneous and it learns and it grows. In many ways, our world needs a kind of nervous system where we were sensing and cognating and responding, creating a, a new understanding, a new level of understanding both socially but also in the organizations that we operate in. And if you think about this, as I have, I've done a lot of thinking about this, geography, the science of our world, would be essential as a science to be able to create such a nervous system. Geography, the science of our world, is about providing content, certainly, but also context, and also a common reference system that you and I relate to all the time. It helps us see. It helps us see the complexity and the relationships and patterns, the associations, and it brings it all together, helping us understand and respond. And certainly, so much of your work is about exactly that. This 50-year-old technology, GIS, was designed in part to abstract geography, to put it into digital form. And it also had the net effect of being able to integrate geographic factors together to bring all the parts, as, as Humboldt described, put all the pieces back together again to see holistically and understand. GIS also brought us a kind of framework and process for measuring everything, really, uh, visualizing it, seeing it in maps, to do analytics with it, spatial analysis, to use those analyses in, in making thoughtful decisions planning, and finally, action. And the Forest Service, for example, is an example. They're measuring constantly and seeing things and analyzing and doing these comprehensive forest management plans. The examples of this are pervasive in this room, and some of you focus just on measurement, like 3 dep or something like that, or census. Others focus on making the policy and planning decisions. But in fact, this framework is pervasive in this room. That's why collaboration and understanding each other's work is so very important, and then interconnecting it. 
I see this interconnection part as being the fabric of building a geospatial infrastructure, shared services distributed like this diagram shows. This resembles the nervous system in the sense that it's like our bodies, we sense things, we understand things, and then we respond. It's a cool notion. I don't know if you've ever thought of it, but it, it, is, it is beautiful in the sense that you are building infrastructure. Through your projects and through your systems, you're creating intelligent and responsive systems, a nervous system just for your organization or just for one or two missions. And this involves connecting everything and connecting everyone in your organization. Ultimately, that is the big goal, that we, we take the systems and the projects that we build and with all, the, with all the considerations of security and privacy involved, we use those systems, some of the data goes to open data and shared information that allows us to build a national or a global infrastructure that is all about data sharing and all about serving each other at scale. And this, ladies and gentlemen, I think is a kind of platform for creating the big enlightenment or understanding that can support collaborative action, not this sort of divisive uh, political world, but living at the science and technical level to unite and bring us together for supporting common, important, rational decision-making or causes. This infrastructure supports individuals and organizations at many different scales. It is actually GIS at scale. It's just a different form. Instead of putting it into a database, it really unites distributed information dynamically and allows sharing and use and reuse shared services across the government. And it provides many capabilities for individuals, like professionals. I can now search and access distributed data and distributed capabilities, like AI, machine learning, or geocoding services, bring them together for me. It isn't just, you know, nicey-nicey. No, it's I can be empowered by distributed networked resources that can be integrated dynamically. It integrates all types of data by abstracting using web services, a kind of common language across different data types, information into shared services that can be used in different ways. These shared, dynamically integrated services deliver powerful capability through apps, dashboard apps, or field apps, or analytic apps. The GIS professional can connect to the infrastructure and bring the necessary information and capabilities to their particular application. And this is going to go big. This is going to go big. Opening up GIS to virtually everyone. Why do I say this? Because the friction of software and tools, costs, building your own data is disappearing. The notion of pervasive web apps that are like JavaScript apps that can download software into my browser and I can do amazing things with, is blowing open the, the doors. So I don't have to spend any money at all. I can just build cool apps that I can use. And the same thing is happening in mobile devices. I'll come back to these later in a minute. And we're also seeing, particularly in the last year, the embedding of Geo into other common IT platforms, CRM, ERP, engineering, graphic design. So services are providing contextual information for our colleagues in completely different fields. And this, this is exponentially growing our community. And you as GIS professionals will be building that infrastructure and managing it and then supporting this almost, you know, I'd call it consumerization of the science and the data that you build. This will interconnect and engage communities of all types. The hub technology brings together individuals and organizations and 
various stakeholders, and we'll see many examples of this shown do, during this week. It also is an age where we can integrate easily open science tools, AI, and machine learning. This goes two ways. It says that open science tools can now be used and integrated with tools like Python notebooks into our traditional GIS patterns. But it also means that traditional GIS patterns can be integrated into the world of open science, helping our colleagues with, with data science, spatializing their insights and, and the like. This infrastructure concept, which runs common to all of this, is extraordinary in this respect. It's also extending GIS to the edge, which is a kind of buzzword these days. I want to take, I want to take computing to the edge, <laughs> you know, like uh, edge devices and, and edge computer nodes. I want it to be replicated in these cloud environments so that I can not only bring in real-time measurements like the like the Ordnance Survey is doing there in the lower right, from Mobilize driving along, they're capturing images, they're capturing the features off the images and sending it, that kind of thing, uh, to the idea that I can literally take copies and in a, in a challenged environment have my data everywhere. This is, this is amazing, actually. I showed this slide last year, I don't think probably anybody remembers it, but it, the vision is that geospatial infrastructure is transforming organizations at the speed of light. It says, using location, a kind of common key, I can take heterogeneous data types in different locations and bring them together and unify them and integrate them using the power of geography to, to understand. This is, uh, this is going to create more responsive organizations. Real-time dashboards. It's already happening, actually. 311, real-time flu reporting, at many different scales all the way out to the UN. And that, that really lays the, lays the logic out for me to make this notion, this kind of declaration. This is a kind of revolution. And we have been doing GIS in particular ways in different patterns for years, and that will not discontinue, that will, that will, that will continue on. But this system of systems vision of interconnecting these systems will create a kind of, I, I, I don't have any other way to describe it, but a kind, of, uh, a kind of nervous system that can profoundly change the way we think and the way we do things. But this is not just going to be technology that does it. The technology will just disappear if there isn't uh, a notion of seeing this, having leadership envisioning what's possible with holistic approaches in organizations and thinking this out. This is what GIS professionals do is they think it out, they lay out architectures, they engage with communities and they be in service. And knowing you as I do, it also, well, my real experience is that it takes people with passion. It isn't just sort of showing up in your job, it takes a, it takes a vision and a passion to, to really even think that you can make a better world. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, the, the end of what I wanted to go through in terms of vision, uh, giving you a sense that you are participating. Perhaps you didn't understand it as well as I've tried to articulate it, but you are participating in, I think, building this infrastructure, which I, I firmly believe with everything that I, that I uh, have ever thought about, that. that this kind of digital geography combined with problem-solving initiatives can actually, can actually be one of those great hopes that turn this difficult situation that we're in around. Mm -hmm.